thought I could do some rapid fire facts about chest tubes because chest tubes are one of those things that if you don't work with them a lot, they're always really intimidating and confusing and you don't know what's normal and what's not normal. So I'm gonna rapid fire and talk about a bunch of things. This is a dry suction water seal chest tube drain. That means for this chest tube atrium, there's two ways that we can drain the chest tube. The first way is to water seal, AKA to gravity. The second way is hooking it up to suction, AKA dry suction and adjusting how much suction you want per the provider's orders. In order to adjust the suction, there is a little knob on the side of this thing that you can kind of twirl. And if your suction is hooked up and working, you're gonna see the bellows, this little E chamber, the bellows is going to be expanded. If you do not have suction hooked up or it is not working, this whole little accordion is going to be gone. It's gonna be deflated. This is your water seal chamber. When you're setting up this chest tube in order to insert the water into the water seal chamber, you're actually going to give it through the suction little port here prior to hooking it up to suction. In your water seal chamber, you may note a couple things. First is you may notice some bubbling. This can be intermittent or continuous. Typically, if your chest tube is inserted for a pneumothorax, you are going to see continuous bubbling initially that should resolve over time because it's that air escaping from that pleural space into the water seal chamber. If your patient has had this chest tube for a while and you're still seeing continuous bubbling several days later, they may have an air leak somewhere in the circuit. Intermittent bubbling is usually caused by patient positioning, coughing, movement, or they may just have an intermittent air leak. You should also see this little white ball here, tidal. Tidaling means this little ball is going to move up and down and it should correlate with the patient's respirations. This is probably the easiest concept, but this is the drainage chamber here. So your fluid that is draining out of the patient's pleural space or wherever the chest tube is located is going to start in this little chamber here, and then eventually it'll spill over and spill over. And so it can go up to two liters in this atrium. Okay, that's a lot of fast facts on chest tubes. If you want some more troubleshooting, emergency chest tube type of stuff, let me know.